Uh, hi everyone. Then he Tana here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Slipknot album, We Are Not Your Kind. This is the sixth studio album from Iowa alternative and new metal showman, Slipknot. A band that in their prime were easily one of my favorites back when I was in the high school. It's been over 20 years since they formed and five since the release of their last full-length record, Point Five, The Grey Chapter, a record that was quickly dismissed as the worst batch of songs the band has ever pulled together. So if Slipknot were to maintain any semblance of a fan base past this point, they need a comeback. They need a bounce back. They need a record that is a return to form. And I think We Are Not Your Kind is kind of that a little bit, while also pushing the band's sound into new territory on multiple tracks here. Anybody who grew up listening to Slipknot and didn't fully transition out of their new metal phase, it's not a phase, Mom. It's not a phase. They know the band's grand opus is 2001's Iowa. Yes, the self-titled record is fantastic, but it's all about Iowa, which is an absolutely enraged record with relentless riffs, demented, anti-social lyrics, flashy drumming, incredible hooks, head-banging grooves. Yes, while Slipknot does have a very gimmicky look and they don't exactly reflect the complexity of a nine-person band, I still think this record has aged much better than most albums in this genre that came out around this time. So it's been pretty encouraging to hear the band bring back that classic Iowa intensity a little bit on their newest material. On the lead single to this thing, Unsainted, the riffs, the drums here, even Corey's screamed manic vocals sound like a classic Slipknot rager, but the chilling and angelic choral vocals that play throughout the track elevate the song to a new level of drama. Corey transitions seamlessly from his usual screams to these clean anthemic choruses. I love the descending guitar lines at this point in the track, also the subtle touches of industrial metallic percussion that play throughout the song. The band is back in full force on this song, and the track is way more gratifying than I thought it was on first listen. The song Nero Forte also brings thumping, pummeling drums all over the track. A speedy thrash-inspired guitar riff too, some devilish vocal harmonies that slip into the song seamlessly. I love that this track is a well-oiled machine, methodical composition, but bestial execution. So truly, there are some tracks on this record that live up to classic Slipknot standards and even exceed them just a little bit. If you like these tracks, you'll also get a lot out of Red Flag, Critical Darling, even though the former of those two tracks I see is Slipknot painting themselves into a corner a little bit on this one. But Slipknot actually spends a fair amount of this record doing things that you would not expect them to do. Firstly, we have the song Birth of the Cruel, which frankly sounds like a corn song, just a copy of a late 90s, early 2000s corn song. From the rhythms to the sour guitar harmonies and even Corey's voice at the start of the song, it sounds very Jonathan Davis inspired. There's even a point where we have these chugging riffs and Corey is just singing through these clenched teeth. Again, very cornish, don't know what exactly drove the band to want to copy their sound so blatantly. Sure, it's listenable, but it's also sort of a head scratcher. There's also some very manic scatting at the end of the track, not long for this world. But to my ears, the corn parallels on this album stop there. We've also got the acoustic passages and clean vocals on A Liar's Funeral, which sound very stone sour-esque. If you've ever heard that Corey Taylor side project, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not that I think this sound is outside of Slipknot's wheelhouse, but I would just like it to be because I, I don't think they pull it off very well. It's not my cup of tea. However, I do love the crushingly heavy choruses on this track and the way that Corey just screams Laya! over these moments in the song. It is spine tingling. I also love the way the band builds up the second half of the track with all these chugging riffs, rising and falling guitar tones, righteous vocal harmonies. It's pretty awesome. I could also go on about the tremolo pick guitars too, the soaring solos. Just know that this is 
is easily one of the most dynamic songs Slipknot has ever recorded, and the second half easily makes up for some of the moments in the first that I don't care for. The record gets even weirder from here with the band embarking on some of the boldest experiments they ever have in the last leg. We have the song Spiders, which feels like a weird combination of Tool, Marilyn Manson, and a repeating plinky piano phrase that seems inspired by the theme to John Carpenter's Halloween soundtrack. Maybe the cartoonishly ghoulish synths in the second half are a bit much, and the chorus lyrics are trying a little bit too hard to sound spooky, but for a song that's so far outside of what Slipknot typically does, it's pretty good and could have gone over a lot worse. The song Orphan kicks off with a pretty epic intro, a lot of atmosphere, pounding drums. Before the song even kicked off, I was getting this feeling of, you know, this, this sounds kind of Slayer. A little rain and blood sounds a little rain and blood-ish. And of course, suddenly the band just busts into the most stereotypically thrash riff I've ever heard in my life. A little heavier, a little chunkier, yes. The band also throws some pretty insane wailing guitar noise over various parts of the riff too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it pretty much sounds like Slayer. And I would actually like to say it's one of the better tracks on the entire record, but it's it's nearly ruined by these god-awful vocal harmonies on the chorus. I am not the same, you never had a clue who knew my name. <laughs> This, they're, not, they're not very good at all. And why do so many Slipknot songs boil down to the sentiment of, of, you don't know me, you don't fucking know me. I guess that's just the way it is sometimes. It's okay to feel that way. The song My Pain is another very low key moment on the record with lots of subdued, sparse, sequenced beats, some chimey synthesizers too. It sounds like something out of a child's music box, but with Corey, of course, throwing some very dark, brooding lyrics and singing on top. It's a little patience testing at seven minutes though. I don't know if the track needed to be this long with as little progression as it has. I think the track would have served much better as a shorter interlude. And now that I've mentioned interludes, I should mention my least favorite thing about this record, the interludes. Truly and honestly, they are not very good. They are horrible at setting the tone for what's to come, and most of them just sound like noisy, lo-fi, droney, baby's first ambient pieces. They ruin the flow of the album when they are devoted to an entire track, and then there are songs out here where Slipknot is killing off an entire 30 seconds to a minute of time before or after a song with a flavorless drone, with pointless noise, they're just padding the album or a track out needlessly. And look, it's not like I would say no to these moments if they were actually great, I would not say no to great ambient interludes, but they're not. Slipknot does save some of the weirdest ideas for last on this record, especially on the closer, Solway Firth, which is named after an estuary which partially separates and, and runs along the border uh, between Scotland and England. Yes, I had to Google that. And there is a moment on this track, for whatever reason, Corey just breaks into an English accent, he's just screaming in an English accent. Is he engaging in a bit of role play here? I'm not sure. It's not like the track has a super clear, logical, flowing storyline. Not to say that there isn't a focus or a concept to this song, there is, but there's nothing in the lyrics that would hint to me that I'm about to play a character or change my accent, he just does it. I don't need you to do it for me! Generally though, it's a pretty massive closer. The guitars and drums may be a bit stereotypical for Slipknot, but it is heavy as hell. I also love the dissonant shots of noise throughout the track. Also these couple of passages that sound like they're submerged underwater. It's a bit of ear candy. All in all though, I think this album is a pretty solid effort from Slipknot. There are some experiments and weird ideas that don't quite pan out, a few tracks that feel very run of the mill for them, but there are tons of highlights throughout this hour plus album. I think generally it would have fared a bit better if the interludes were of a higher quality, but I seriously have to commend the band on this one. This came out much better than I thought it was going to. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Slipknot, we are not your kind forever.